Welcome back, everybody, to some Steins Gate Zero. I'm your host, the Musical Gamer, and we are here today to continue this rousing dinner party we've got going on. It was thanks to Izaki that I was able to get into the reception held after the ATF was over. They told me that there was a dress code, so I went all the way back to my parents' house to get a suit to change into. At first, all that effort paid off as Izaki introduced me to some of the country's top researchers. Riken, Jaxa, Imus, etc. But before long, Izaki ran off to suck up to some university professor and I was left completely abandoned. Isn't that just the worst when your friend does that? <laughs> My own personal target, Dr. Laskinen, was surrounded by a bunch of famous scientists. I didn't feel like a mere student would be welcome. And so all I did was stand around and eat from the buffet by the wall. To be honest, I couldn't tell if the food was any good or not. Whenever my glass got empty, a smiling waiter was always around to fill it up again, and so I found myself drinking more than I intended. My stomach was already so full it hurt. The whole place... Okay, wait a minute, hold on. I'm getting... I'm getting... I'm getting blips here. Daru? Oh! Hey, hey buddy. I... Oh. Can't believe you get to go to a fancy parody. Die in a fire, Mr. Fancy Pants! <laughs> Dude! Oh, that's just mean! Wait, did I ignore him? I think I ignored him. <laughs> Let's wait. <laughs> Can I respond to this? I want to respond. Oh god. Don't 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 be hating, Daru, just because I'm moving in the upper circle here. I'm really not cut out for this. The exact moment I spoke, I heard a girl sit next to me say the exact same thing. Surprised, I looked over at her. Our eyes met. I, oh, it's you! Hi, Maho. What was a middle school girl doing? Oh, we we really doing the song and dance again. And then a moment later, I realized it was Maho Hiyajo. She was wearing the exact same outfit she'd been wearing during the lecture. A lab coat in a place like this? That's just what the old me would have done. Let's see. Your... Maho was clearly out of place. Why? Because she was still wearing her lab coat. Why are you wearing a lab coat? I couldn't help but ask. I, I was sure I'd brought some real clothes. She was sure she had, but she hadn't. <laughs> oh no, she forgot to bring clothes. Oh god. Isn't that just the worst with that? No, I can't I can't exactly say that'd be the worst, huh? And that's why she was standing in the corner, trying not to attract attention. Legal lollies for the win. You're the guy who was at the desk this afternoon. I'm Rintaro Okabe. I'm a student at Tokyo Denki University in Professor Izaki's class. I handed her one of the business cards that I'd thrown together after Izaki told me I needed them. She grabbed one of her own out of a stack and carelessly put it into my hands. It's fine. No need to be so polite. That was a huge help. My name's pretty rare, isn't it? Huh? Uh, oh, yeah. You said nobody could read it? I looked at the card and saw that the pronunciation of her name was written in unusually large letters. That was probably because of how people kept screwing it up. <laughs> it's a common name in Okinawa, though. You're from Okinawa? My great-grandmother and great-grandfather were immigrants. I was born and raised in America. Half... No, you don't look half Japanese. Quarter? Nope, my grandpa, grandma, mom, and dad were all Japanese. My DNA is purely Japanese. Huh. Well, go figure. And then the conversation stopped. Oh, god damn it! Pull it together, Okabe! You need to be able to speak to these people. The old me would have gone full Chunibyo. Chunibyo? And started ranting about conspiracies and magic powers. Whether the other person cared or not, but you can't really call that a conversation. Uh, excuse me? The hell is a... The hell is a Chunibyo? I've never heard that before. Literally, 8th grader's disease. Oh, lovely. This term <laughs> refers to the slightly unusual actions and speech patterns commonly used by Japanese boys undergoing puberty. What? It can also be used as a pejorative term toward people who left puberty a long time ago but still say highly embarrassing things as if they were still kids. Oh, so... So me, basically. God fucking damn it. Chunibyo refers to someone who performs antisocial, misanthropic, or delusional actions or makes statements in an attempt to make themselves seem like a grown-up. Oh my god, this game- no, this game. Stop it, please. No. No, don't do this to me. While the speaker may think that they're really cool, from the perspective of an adult, they look ridiculous. Chunibyo can be broken down further into categories, one of which is the evil eye Chunibyo. What? Who seems convinced that he has a special anime power or backstory. For example, an evil eye that gives him magical abilities. Strictly speaking, Ocarine falls into this category. <laughs> okay, well, I'm, I'm, I, I don't have an evil eye. I'm just... I, oh, I'm just embarrassing. 
<laughs> I can't go anywhere. <laughs> I need to stay in my basement. <laughs> Deoxyribonucleic acid, oh, DNA. Yeah, I know what DNA is. Live at the High Energy Accelerator Research Organization. Keck. 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 Keck is stay. What? No. What? Ja Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency. All right. I thought for a second that said ISIS up there. It's ISAS. And Riken Institute of Physical and Chemical Research. Huh. Okay. Fair enough. I have no idea what to say to someone I never met before. I've been working at becoming a real adult, even buying and studying men's magazines. But none of it really helped. <laughs> Without anything to talk about, I looked over to Dr. Laskinen. He seemed to be giving a lecture on neurons to a bunch of scientists. I'm sorry about today. Huh? Sorry for what? Uh, oh, for interrupting your lecture. Oh, that. Don't worry about it. If you hadn't spoken up, I probably would have. I can't stand people like that. Sure would have been a good idea. You heard what the professor said. Scientists remain calm at all times. I'm not speaking as a scientist right now, so it's fine. I must have really ticked her off because she grabbed a cocktail from a passing waiter and gulped it down. Huh. Whew. Her cheeks turned a pretty shade of pink for an instant, but no longer. She might have, a high, might have had a high alcohol tolerance. But you're right, really. Sorry. Criticisms like that. They aren't very nice, but they're true. A lot of our research still has a long way to go. Really? There are a lot of problems we still have to deal with. More than we discussed at the lecture. Here's an example. We can write memory data back into the brain. But if the brain can't use it, then it's useless. The memories are there, but you can't get to them. It's basically the same as amnesia. As Maho spoke, I remembered. I remembered all the lectures and thoughts that Kurisu had given me when she was making the time leap machine. Um, if I remember right, when people try to access their memories, the signal goes from the frontal lobe to the temporal lobe, right? Yep, top-down memory search signals. So then... And then I started to talk, remembering what Kurisu had told me about her theories as I went. When I used specialized terminology whose meanings I barely remembered, Maho would tell me what they were. And so finally, in the process of writing these memories back to the temporal lobes, uh... You send the pseudopulse you copied along with them to the front lobes. The memory search signal will function properly, I think. Uh-oh. Did you figure that out for yourself? What? Uh, no. Maho looked back at the business card I'd given her. Your major isn't brain science. So someone told you this? Or did you read it in a paper? No, that's impossible. She wouldn't have put it into a paper yet. Did I say something wrong? No, that's not it. One of the researchers at the lab said the exact same thing. None of the other staff believed her, but she said if she was sure she could prove it. In the end, she left us before she got to the test stage. That's... Should I tell her? Should I tell her about me and Kurisu? In this world line, there's almost no connection between me and Kurisu. What is it? I made up my mind. If I wanted to follow my dreams, I needed to act. Actually, it was Kurisu who told me this theory. What? What did you just say? Kurisu Makise told me about it. Kurisu told you? When? Why? When she was over here as an exchange student. We became friends and she talked to me about this stuff. Of course, that was a lie. Kurisu and I became friends in the Alpha World line, not this one. But a small leg like, like this was probably okay. I see. So Kurisu... Thank you. I mean it. Her words surprised me. That was the one thing I didn't expect to hear. For what? For being her friend. She came to Japan all alone. I mean, I'm sure she would have been bored studying all by herself. All we ever did was fight, though. <laughs> yeah, ain't that the truth? It sounds like her. She never gave in, did she? Never. She'd argue for hours. <laughs> She'd tell me all the time about how she was going to give me a lobotomy and rip out my frontal lobe. You know, what good friends do to each other. I'm just gonna lobotomize you because you're pissing me the frick off. <laughs> oh, God. What? She wouldn't... 
I could see Carissa saying that. <laughs> I see. He had a bit of an attitude problem, right? You need to discipline your researchers better. I'll admit that much. Sorry. Huh? She's crying. She smiled, or so I thought, and then all of a sudden she started to cry. What's wrong? I didn't have any better ideas, so I grabbed my handkerchief. Huh? Huh? She didn't seem to know why she was crying herself. Neither did I. Had I said something during the conversation that set her off? Did I, did I activate my inner Chunibyo powers? Are you okay? I'm fine, sorry. She didn't take my handkerchief. Instead, she took a tissue out of her pocket and wiped her eyes. My brave third Einstein... Oh, no. Uh-oh. Oh, it's you! Hi, Mr. Blonde Man. I turned around and saw Dr. Leskin and smiling and quickly striding towards me. Oh, jeez, that is a... Yeah. <laughs> You're pretty close. He grabbed my hand as he got closer. The handshake was incredibly forceful. And his hands were as big as a bear's paws. No, not just his hands. What, his dick? No. Standing in front of me, he looked even bigger than he had during the lecture. Pretty tall, but he was at least a head taller than me. Um, Professor, I... Uh-oh. It was all so sudden that I couldn't even think of an introduction. Wait, did he just speak in Japanese? Still, I don't approve of you making my assistant cry. Oh no, this is... No, Professor. It wasn't his fault. He had nothing to do with it. Maho and I both denied it as much as we could. But I didn't know why Maho was crying, so I couldn't come up with any excuses. I just started to panic even more. Quick! Panic! Stop, drop, and roll! Stop, drop, and roll right out of the window! So basically, um... Kurisu. I was talking with him about Kurisu, and I just started crying. Kurisu? You're a friend of Kurisu's! I... Yes. This is Rintaro Okabe. He's a student. Maho introduced me. Oh, this is going swimmingly. Dr. Leskinen had a gentle expression on his face as he gave me a slow hug. I felt like I was going to suffocate in his massive arms. <laughs> what? Somehow I could tell that it was his way of remembering Kurisu. I see. If that's the case, then Maho. Yes? Why not introduce her to Mr. Okabe? You can't mean Amadeus. It was good luck that brought him to us here, wasn't it? While we're in Japan, you can have him be a tester. Are you serious? You can't just let an outsider... If he's a friend of Kurisu's, he's no outsider, correct? But, sir! What were they talking about? I had no idea, but this was my chance to build a relationship with Dr. Leskin. I didn't want to blow it. I'd love to help. Nice! Nice you! <laughs> he patted me on the shoulders and smiled. It was an innocent smile like a child's. Okay then, ask Maho for the deep dance. Thanks! The scientist was calling him, so he wandered away. Maho was shaking her head in disbelief. What's he talking about, meeting Amadeus? Being a tester. The demonstration of Amadeus we did during the convention used my memories, but... Amadeus also has another researcher's memory saved as data. Another researcher's memories? Oh, I can see where this is going. What did that mean? When I finally figured it out from Dr. Leskin and Maho's conversation, my heart started pounding. You can't mean... Her? Yeah. Kurisu Makise's memories are stored in Amadeus. They're eight months old, though. Well, and there you have it. Several days passed after the ATF party. So are we gonna actually do this? Ten minutes from Ikebukuro via the express train. And then ten minutes by bus from a station called Wako City in Saitama. The office I was looking for was on the second floor of a building right next to the Riken. Riken? Riken? Global Brain Science Comprehensive Research Organization. Japanese office prep room. That was what the plate on the door said. To get in, you needed three types of special keys, plus a security card. What is this place? The plan is for brain scientists from all around the world to work together to make a new organization. Our lab is leading the way. She led me inside. Nope. Hello. I got, I got me a textual message. Oh, hey, Ferris. The mysterious Suketos have at last appeared in Akihabara, nya. What? 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 Is it? I'm confused. What? 
Ferris, are you... Are you drunk? You haven't heard of the ancient urban legends of Akihabara? I... No, what? I know about a few of them, but the Suketos are new to me. If a group of three people sit, s sits in the backseat of a certain maid cafe, they appear. What appears? Or so they say. Danger. <laughs> Wait a minute, do you have your own emotes? Danger, danger, da Oh my god. She's just spamming me with danger emotes. No one ever knew which maid cafe it was. Until now, nya. It's the May Queen. Oh no. Danger, danger. Danger, Will Robinson. I is everything okay? Everything's fine. They just join your game in the middle of a raid and kill steal all the mobs. <laughs> god, hang on a second. <laughs> Wait, danger. <laughs> What is this? What is this conversation? I don't even know. Can I call you? No, I can't call you. I can't call anybody. Oh, I have Maho's number now, apparently. That's interesting. All right, fair enough. Thank you, game. I needed that laugh. Uh, there wasn't even a whiteboard, which made the room look even more empty. There wasn't a lot of unnatural light. Maybe the windows were on the north side. The only illumination was from the overhead fluorescent lights. The room felt very cold. This is just the prep room. No one was sitting at any of the desks, but two of them had stuff on them. One of them was a mess filled with notes, calculators, coffee cups, and supplement bottles. That was the one Maho sat down at. Oh, of course. Why am I not surprised? Which meant the one that was neatly organized must belong to Dr. Leskinen, right? Where's the professor? Off today. Well, it was Sunday. Are you off today, too? Yeah, otherwise I wouldn't have been able to sleep past noon. <clears throat> That's true. When I got to pick her up from her hotel in Waco City, she'd come out of the room half asleep at noon. You are you are one lazy chick. That was this was the day that I was to meet Amadeus Carisu. Ma had gone over the basics of being a tester on the way here. Essentially, Amadeus needed sample data for conversations, and they were going to give me an environment where I could talk to it at any time, 24 hours a day. Well, that's not going to end poorly. She didn't give me any details beyond that, though. So I'll be able to talk to Amadeus Carisu 24 hours a day, huh? Is she... Is Carisu's Amadeus here? Yeah. Mao nodded and gave me a glance. You just said she, didn't you? Uh-huh, yeah. You two were a lot closer than I thought, weren't you? Oh, that must be some Japanese thing. Maybe my silence was an answer in itself. Nope. Hello. Who dares contact me? Uh, oh. Uh, Rukako. Lukako. I I'm gonna have such a hard time adjusting to that. I've- watching the anime, I've known her- her- him. <laughs> Daga Otokota. Uh, but I've known Rukako as- as Rukako, not Lukako. It's gonna be really confusing. For at least a little while. Do I have a moment of your time? I'm meeting someone. Is it important? Uh, yeah. Is, is it important? No, it's not that important. Can I wait then? Alright, I'll contact you later. Sorry. No, please don't worry about it. I. Why does Myri have her own stickers, damn it? A two, thanks. Doubly, doubly sure you can contact me later. Maho's response was uncharacteristically hesitant. Then maybe you shouldn't meet her after all. Why? The more. the closer you are to someone, the crueler that system is. I'm okay. Fine, I won't bring it up again, but just remember one thing. The memories are from March, the last time Carisu did an update. So anything you say about what happened after March, for example, when she was in Japan, she won't remember. That's right, isn't it? And the professor and I have run her program a lot of times between March and today. Each time Kurisu, oh, I mean the Amadeus Kurisu, has created memories the original never had. Stories we've told her, information she's found on the internet, new people she's talked to, things like that. Hmm. In other words, what you're about to meet isn't Kurisumaki, say your friend. It's one of the problems with the system. It causes a lot of confusion with the people on this side. I, I mean, us humans. Because you'll think you're talking to the real Kurisu. So don't get reality and fantasy mixed up, I guess. Our brains have trouble keeping up with the fact that our memories aren't shared with them. Memories that aren't shared? Now there's a feeling I knew well. Reading Steiner. It was a power only I possessed, which made my memories different than those of the people around me. Yeah, how many world lines of memories do we have stored now at this point? Like, 
dozens and dozens of failed attempts of saving Mayuri's life in the, in the last game. That's... we. How, how his brain even continues to function, I have no idea. Take me to her. Maho gave me a slight nod. This way. She led me to the back of the room. There was a booth separated by a thick partition. To get inside the booth, you needed a different card key than the one used to get into the room, as well as the security code. You're pretty strict about security. Industrial spies are our biggest threat these days. He entered the security code and unlocked the door. Go inside. Yes, ma'am. The room was about two and a half meters per side. At one end was a white desk, and above it was a PC with a built-in 30-inch screen monitor. So it's in an all-in-one computer. Sit just behind me. There was a small sofa that let you sit behind the user and see what was happening on the screen. I sat there. Maho powered on the PC and began to type. Nope, oh, there we go. Salieri. A second later, the words Amadeus system appeared on screen. I saw her put the ID in. Salieri. Salieri? Yeah, what is that? I've, I've never heard that word before. What is that? Antonio Salieri. 1750 to 1825, an Italian composer. From the same time as Mozart. Huh! Really? A composer? I didn't, I've never even heard of Salieri. I was, I'm a musician! What the hell? I trained with such famous composers as Beethoven, Schubert, and Liszt. He trained Schu I freaking love Schubert! Schubert's like one of my favorite composers ever. Oh, God damn it. I didn't even know. Salieri. No, wait, hold on. Actually, no, now that I think about it, that does sound familiar. But... Oh, crap baskets. I, I, I can't remember the music he did. Nerve signals, frontal lobe, lovely, fr lovely frontal lobe. Lovely lobotomies. Who, who doesn't like a lobotomy, right? <laughs> lobotomies when you cut out part of the brain. Salieri and Amadeus, huh? Yeah, we're going for a music theme here. Is there some meaning to that? Come to think of it, in the famous movie Amadeus, there was a character that, who was spiteful and jealous of Mozart's incredible talents, but who in the bottom of his heart admired him more than anyone else. Was that Salieri? Well, that was Salieri. I only watched Amadeus like once. Many, many, many years ago. <laughs> so I don't remember. Don't look at the password. Wait, but fine. Jeez. I looked away. She finished logging into the system, and a simple bare command prompt appeared on the screen. Are you ready? Yeah, do it. Maho entered several commands at the prompt. Sorry, I can't show you this. Well, I wouldn't be able to make any sense of it. Wait, is that... Is that a Logitech webcam? Up on top of the... That is the exact same webcam I have right now. What the... Oh my god, no. Oh god, this feels too... It's too real! It's too real for me. Can't... Can't handle it. Still, you know how it is. She turned off the monitor, and she spun around to face me. I suddenly realized I was clenching my fists. How long had I been doing that? My hands were sweaty, and there was a red spot at the base of my thumb where my nails had dug in. Was I more nervous than I realized? Hmm. What is it? Oh, just... I'm starting to get a little scared. There's still time. You can just leave now. You're pretty mean. <laughs> really? I'm worried about you. Then act like it. Seriously, you Kurisu, you lab girls. For a second, the old joking me was about to come back. I quickly changed the subject. People who spend all their time doing experiments can be so rude. That's a clear case of slander. I can sue you for defamation if I want. <laughs> Stop, you're scaring me. <laughs> what? You can't do that. I know a good lawyer. Want me to introduce you? How about you stop suing me first? If you want to talk about a settlement, you're going to need a lot of cash. I'll buy you a Dr. Pepper later. <laughs> I know that's a Dr. Pepper. The drink of intellectuals, my favorite soda. The abbreviation of a type of carbonated beverage that first served in America in the 1800s. Over 20 flavors, indeed. Amadeus is Latin for beloved of God. Really? Oh, well, yeah, Deus is God. The middle name of the Austrian composer. Hmm. Yeah, beloved by God. It's fair. I don't. I, I. I know that's also what they constantly say about him in like fake grand order and stuff. You're so cheap. I heard a small sound from the back of her throat. I guess she was laughing. Normally I'd find that irritating, but strangely coming from the girl in front of me. No, she was a grown woman. Actually, I. I didn't. Maho Hiyajo was a very strong. Was very strong-willed. 
with a friendliness and short temper unique to scientists. She always seemed to be a little upset about something, but maybe she wasn't that bad. Oh, I see. She, Maho, she's a lot like Kurisu. Well, there she is. When I first met Kurisu, she was like that. Arrogant, rude, never willing to change her mind, stubborn, hard-headed always ready to confront you with raised eyebrows whenever you said something she didn't like. I truly thought I'd never seen a more unlikable woman. Really, huh? But despite my first impression on the inside, she turned out to be fragile, easily hurt, and so kind and so lovable. What's so funny, Maho? I suddenly heard a girl's voice from the speaker. Oh! I found myself jumping off the sofa. I knew this voice. I couldn't forget it. I could never. Maho turned on the monitor. Well, hi there. The girl I'd never forgotten appeared on the screen. Maybe it was based off her appearance at the brain science lab. Because she was wearing a white lab coat. The PC's camera turned toward me on its own. Uh, who is this? Maho was introducing me. But I didn't hear anything she was saying. I simply stared, entranced. I wanted to reach out my hands. I wanted to touch her. Giggity. She, she was right there. Nice to meet you, Rintaro Okabe. I'm Kurisu Makise. I look forward to working with you. that opening oh that was good i like that song i think the song's called amadeus from everything i looked up about the game beforehand but that is one freaking phenomenal opening to this game all right mr okabe try to relax oh we're we're going we got some psychology shit going on here <laughs> i got a shrink i'm seeing a shrink my voice is a bridge guiding you down into the past you're going down and down and down and then you see a gentle colored light. I was dreaming. Daydreaming. I was aware that I was lying on a big sofa, undergoing counseling. I tried my best to stay calm and imagine what the psychologist was telling me. What color is the light? Red. Red, I see. The person you care about is standing in the light. Are they your family? No. Then your friend, or perhaps lover. Lover? No, not my lover. Not even my friend. Then what are they? She and I are. Memories came flooding back into my mind like a geyser.
Could you come with me for a moment? What? My Rishina is not needed. Ooh, the events of Stein's Gate. Tell me, I know you use the Time Leap Machine. Oh, ho, ho, and the day of infinite Tuturu deaths. Save Mayuri. Go to the Beta World Line, the world where Mayuri doesn't die. Not just for your sake, but for mine as well. Will you remember me? After a moment like that, oh God. And then after all of that, oh, Jesus Christ, th th this game just rips your heart out at points. Am I going to die? I don't want to die. Oh God, Mr. Okabe, I killed her. It was me, it was me. Listen to me, I'm going to pat you on the shoulders. When I do, you will be fully awake. Three, two, one, now. That sounded more like you slapped me. You, you freaking decked me in the face. I felt an impact on my shoulders. Carissa's suffering face disappeared instantly and I could feel my consciousness awakening. Uh, I stood up off the sofa. I felt dizzy and almost fell over. Are you all right? Rest a minute. I'll bring you a towel right now. The psychologist left the room. I realized I was soaked in sweat. The air conditioner was working, so I couldn't tell. I could tell it wasn't from the heat. It was the first time I tried hypnotherapy at a mental health clinic. My body felt strangely heavy. When I got outside, it was night. It was almost December, and the wind was cold. How was it, Ocarine? Mayuri Sheena asked me gently. Mayuri was a high school student and my childhood friend. She'd come with me to counseling today. I told her I didn't need her to, but she'd left school early to come. All I ever did was make her worry. Around three months ago, when my one obsession had been saving her. To me, she had always been someone I had to protect. And now she was worried about me. Oh, hello. Hold on. Pause the pause the action. I got a something here. Ooh, I'm a deus. Uh, got a sec, Uncle Ocarine? Oh, right. But I refuse. <laughs> okay. Lay it on me. Listen, what do you think I should do about Mom and Dad? Um, what do you mean? I just can't see them getting together like this. Well, you're right. Uncle Ocarine, is there anything you can do? You know there's nothing I can do to help with that. They're on their own. <laughs> I'm not getting involved. Kind of hurts that you just gave up that easily. <laughs> it doesn't seem to be your kind of thing, Uncle. Jealous? <laughs> Je Hold on, can I? I can't click Amadeus. Okay. I still have, I still have everybody's numbers here. It was only because of Mayuri's recommendation I tried counseling. It's not that bad, they said. I told her a small lie to make her feel better. Uh-huh, sure. What the- Oh my god, I don't know if you heard that. There's like a motorcycle revving its engine outside. The obnoxious little twat. Now they wanted to wait to see the results. Don't they know I'm recording in here? God damn it. Basically, they decided there was nothing to do but treat my treat my symptoms and wait for it to heal naturally. I couldn't tell if what Maho had shown me yesterday was having an effect. I underwent treatment without telling the psychologist about the, the time machine or the world lines, or most of the things that had happened. So maybe there was no way for them to make a proper diagnosis. In any event, I decided not to think too much about the results. Hey, Myri, you haven't eaten yet, right? Want to go get some food? I'll treat you. Oh, can we go to Akihabara then? Luca and Ferris say they haven't seen you in forever, and they want to meet up. Akihabara, huh? The clinic was in walking distance of my house. Akihabara was much farther away. But even so, I couldn't turn my down Mayuri's request. Until the events of this summer, I'd gone there almost every day. In fact, I practically lived there. Lately, I only went three times a week at the absolute most. And then only to go shopping on the way home from school. We went out into the plaza in front of the station. 
Just like in Ikebukuro, even though it was only a month until Christmas, there were barely any decorations. I was sure the whole place would be covered in them the minute it was December 1st. Yeah, like ever, everywhere else in the world, like Christmas starting earlier and earlier. Jeez. Eventually, I was sure to see maids in Santa outfits. Maids in Santa outfits passing out flyers in Akihabara, huh? Akihabara could be really weird. Oh, it's Ferris and Luca! <laughs> Toot to <-do. laughs> Ferris, what are you wearing? <laughs> Meow? Kyoma! Okabe, Mayuri. Ferris and Luca must have been waiting. They ran over to they ran over as soon as they saw us. Oh! I missed you, Nya! Ferris and Nyan Nyan. <laughs> Ferris and Nyan Nyan jumped at me without the slightest hesitation. She was a maid, and Ferris wasn't her real name. I knew her real name, but if I didn't call her Ferris at all times, even when she was, wasn't was working, she'd get mad at me. Her real name's Rumiho, isn't it? I believe so. I work close from her job at the maid cafe, May Queen Nyan Squared? Wait, was that May Queen Nyan Squared? May Queen Nyan Squared. May, oh, isn't it supposed to be the May Queen Nyan Nyan? Was May Queen going to switch to Santa outfit soon? Stop it, everybody's looking at us. I tried to pull Ferris off me, but it wasn't working. Maybe I should just steal the cat ears off her. Oh god, that's gonna get you clawed, dude. Who cares, Nya? All that matters right now is... <laughs> right meow is Ferris and Kyoma. Oh god, this is gonna be just as bad as Sigma from VLR with the goddamn cat puns, isn't it? I care! Stop calling me Kyoma! Nya? Yeah? Why? I have con I have consigned that name to my dark past. Meow. Ferris looked upset, but I decided to ignore her. Kyoma Halloween. Halloween Kyoma was part of a past I'd sealed away. I decided to pretend he never existed. He had meddled with a forbidden invention called the Time Machine, and as a result, the systems that ruled the world had punished him. He dashed the hopes of many, lost the life of someone he cared for, and his heart had suffered grievous wounds. He must never be awakened again. I didn't need him anymore. That's depressing. And what should I call you, Nya? Well, Okabe or something. I think Okarine's a cute name, don't you, Ferris? By the way, Ferris was what Mayuri called Ferris. She claimed it was easier to pronounce or something like that. Wait, there's a difference? <laughs> this is news to me. Well, if, if you say so, Mayushi. It still doesn't sound right, though. She looked unsatisfied, but she backed away. Lukako, it's been a while. Yes. Lukako smiled happily. He always looks as beautiful as a, as a pretty girl. <laughs> but he's a guy. Daga <laughs> Otokoda. Oh, God. He was, a, he was a classmate of Mairi's, and he could often be seen helping at the Yanabayashi Shrine, where his family lived. I probably shouldn't call him Lukako. Just like I told Ferris not to call me Kyoma. He had his own name, Luka Urushib Urushibara. But calling Lukako Luka after all this time, that would be really embarrassing. Feels like a very long time. I sometimes go to the lab, but you haven't been there much, have you? No, I haven't. I've been busy with school. I had to get ready for ATF, too. Even after that was done, I'd been busy with Maho and Dr. Leskin, and then Amadeus. I hadn't had a chance to rest. But I avoided mentioning that to them. <laughs> oh, and I'm in a club now. You joined a club? What kind of club, Nya? UFOs? UMAs? What do you guys think I am? I guess I hadn't told them then. Myri, I'm pretty sure I told her. As the two of them looked at me with wide eyes, I cracked a knowing smile and puffed out my chest. The tennis club. Uh, what? <laughs> they, they can't believe it. The people around us all turned to stare at Ferris and Luca. What, why the tennis club? Okabe, have you ever played tennis? Of course not. I mean, I look it, but I'm terrible at sports. I'm confident I'd lose the Mayori at distance running. Then why, Nya? Yeah. Well, it's a long story, but... The associate professor who's my teacher at school is the tennis club's advisor, and they asked me to join. It's not long at all, Nya! Yeah. Well, I'm not done yet. The teacher's done a lot for me, so I decided to stop by. And? And it turns out I have a talent for tennis. Despite the fact that I'm a beginner, I beat every single one of them. Well, amazing, huh? <laughs> you really are amazing, Okabe. <laughs> if I had known, I would have been a pro tennis player. You could win Wimbledon. <laughs> Wimbledon, really? I don't think so. This, 
This nut job? No way in hell. You have a headache? I'm not even sure where to begin. That's the most obvious ploy to get new members that I've heard of. Don't say that. I had kind of noticed, but I'm trying to avoid thinking about it. But they're all really good people. So you've been busy practicing with your club then? Huh? Oh no, actually I barely go. Huh? Then just what am you doing? Matchmaking parties and stuff. Uh, what? <laughs> they can't believe anything that comes out of my mouth. Their shouts filled the whole street. Once again, people turn around the stare. Yeah, I'm popular with the ladies, ladies. And, 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 but he's a guy. It's not that surprising, is it? I'm a normal college kid. That's true. I'm sorry. But, Luca was fidgeting like he wanted to say something. How can you go after other women when you've got your beautiful fair? It's, it's unforgivable, Nya. Don't get the wrong idea, okay? I'm not really interested in girls. In fact, I went along with the rest of the club, but there really wasn't a place for a wannabe normal like me. A normal? What? Y normal? Normies? Oh, I should call myself a normie? <laughs> oh no! I was like, wait a minute. Did I just call myself a normie? <laughs> a lot of time at their school clubs, or who go to parties, or aren't interested in anime, or who go outside Japan during summer break. <laughs> Examples are people with lots of friends, or people with girlfriends. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, there was no way I could keep up with the conversations that the, well, normal normies had. While the other men and women were having fun, I would just kind of sit there. Oh, I'm calling, oh, he's calling everybody else normies. I'm not a normie. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Matchmaking party was a challenge far beyond my capabilities. I wasn't going to tell Ferris and Luca that, though. Ah, oh, that's so nice! Mayushi wants to go to a matchmaking party with Okarine, too. What? Mayuri wanted to do what? <laughs> oh god, hide your kids, hide your wife. Is she old enough to be interested in that sort of thing? How old is she? Because that's when everybody gets together and has a fun party, right? Evidently not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God damn it. Well, it's not wrong, but the nuance is a little different. We could hold it in, at the lab. Of course, Luke and Ferris will come. Oh, and Daru and Nai and Suzu. Oh. Maya returned to me with a guilty look. Suzu, huh? <laughs> Suzu Amane. Also known as John Titer. A time traveler from the year 2036. A true warrior who was still fighting even as I was trying to get my best to give up. I'd barely seen her since summer. I was avoiding her. Part of the reason I'd stopped going to the lab was that she spent all her time there now. Until a month or so ago, I just hearing Suzuha's name was enough to cause flashbacks. And it was all I could do to endure them. After three months, I could finally stand to hear her name. I didn't think I'd keep it together if I met her in person. I've got a real, like, PTSD about this girl. God damn it. The worst part is, I'm like, I'm like her, I, I guess, godfather? Of course, it wasn't her fault, and I wasn't blaming her. So I didn't want to blame her. Or I didn't want her to blame me. She'd never come out and said it. But when she looked at me with that razor-sharp glint in her eyes, I felt something like guilt. Well, I bet. Um, uh, everyone? Hmm? Mayushi's been planning an operation with Daru. An operation? It sounded like something the old me would have done. Yeah, what kind of operation, yeah? Um... Operation Make Suzu Smile. Huh? Why was Mayuri talking about this out of the blue? No, maybe it wasn't out of the blue. She might have been thinking about that for a long time. So I decided to respond as cheerfully as I could. Tell me about it, Mayuri. Oh. Okay. Um, so Mayushi thinks that Suzu's normally kind of scary. But she's actually a really nice person. Sometimes when I'm in the lab, I'll start to fall asleep on the sofa. And when I wake up, there will be a blanket over me. When I ask Suzu about it, she says she has no idea, but... Oh, I had a similar experience. My dad once asked me to go out shopping for him. And I was having trouble on the way back because I had to carry so much. And then Amara came by, and without saying anything, she took some of the bags from me, and carried them. Huh, I had no idea. She said that it wasn't a big deal, so I shouldn't tell anybody. Oh, I guess I just did. <laughs> Way to go. Fort Knox, you aren't. I see. 
In the Alpha World line, she was a cheerful girl who smiled at everyone and who loved to, who loved to go mountain biking. But in this world line, she wasn't the type who smiled a lot. This was partially due to the way she'd grown up. I'd heard about it third hand from Daru, but because of the universal conscription program that started after World War III broke out, yes, that's a thing, she'd been forced to undergo military training ever since she was in middle school. And after that, she'd joined up with the anti-government forces and gotten caught in a terrible struggle. After that, she said she never really smiled. So I want Suzu to really smile. I see. So what's your plan, yeah? A Christmas party! A Christmas party? We all spoke in unison. It's almost Christmas, right? And Suzu says she's never been to a Christmas party. So Mayu, she wants to give her one as a present. There's and looking nodded at almost the exact same time. Hmm. I mean, what could possibly go wrong, right? I'm in. Yeah, I guess so. Me too. I, I think. You in? You in, uh, Ocarine? Will you come too? Well... Manu? It's not that, it's just I don't think Suzu Hub would really want me there, do you? I was never going back to the past. I still couldn't forget the look on Suzu's face when I told her that. It was an expression filled with anger and despair. She must have felt like her last, most desperate hope was crumbling away right in front of her eyes. The words she said to me that were still sharp thorns lodged in my heart. Suzuha doesn't like me, you know. Why if she doesn't think so? I think she probably regrets the fact that she got mad at you. I think she just can't say it. Really? That's kind of a leap, but okay. I'm gonna turn it down after Mayuri said that. Fine, I'll think about it. Okay. Um, by the way, Okabe. There was a bit of hesitation in Luca's voice. Oh no. How did the doctor's appointment go? Evidently, Luca had heard about my counseling from Mayori. Maybe he'd wanted, me to, wanted to see me because he was worried about how it went. I guess I'm making Luca go and Ferris worry, too. In this world line, they hadn't joined the lab, but even so, they were still dear friends. I never tried hypnotherapy before. It was interesting. I never thought it would work on me, so that was a big surprise. It worked? Perfectly. Huh. I bet Luke and Jan wouldn't last a second. Aw, oh, come on. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Luca would believe anything you told him. Anyway, there was no point in standing around forever. I was getting hungry, and it was time to find some place to eat. Hey, guys. What do you want to eat? My treat. We decided to head toward Yodobashi. There was a lot of restaurants there, so it was perfect. Way to go, Kyoma. I mean, Okarine. You're the best, Nya. Thank you. <laughs> what should I eat? Maybe fried chicken? Juicy fried chicken? That's all Mayushi ever eats, yeah. <laughs> At least she's consistent, right? I thought to myself, what would it be like if Kurisu was here? I tried my hardest for the past few months not to think about her, but... Was it because of my experience yesterday that I did anyway? The expressions and little mannerisms I'd seen yesterday. The voice, the way she walked. I remembered... I remembered my conversation with her. Hello, Rintaro Okabe. I'm Kurisu Makise. Alright, uh, I'm gonna call it good here, because I'm kind of hungry. I'm gonna go eat some food myself. I'm talking about dinner. It's making me hungry for food. So, that is all for me for today. So, thanks all for watching. Let me know down below what you thought. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Also, let me know down below or on Twitter or in the Discord. Uh, links to all those you can find in the description, by the way, below the video. Uh, whether or not you want voice acting turned on or off, I still can kind of go either way on it. I'm just sort of waiting for general consensus from everybody, but that is all for me. This is the Musical Gamer signing off. Thanks all for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video. Catch you guys then.